3D rendering is something most beginners don't really pay attention to until they are done with their first project. That's when they begin to wonder why that project is taking 15 years to render. I rewrote this script almost 17 times and one thing I came to realize was this. 3D rendering is a huge problem and for that matter, you can't go hard on it. You have to exercise a lot of patience, time, effort and invest a lot of money on both hardware and software in order to have that little boost in speed you want. In this video, I'll talk a little about rendering and then list a couple of things that contribute to slow or massive hours of rendering and then I would leave you with the best solution I got. Afterwards, I would spend maybe 2 minutes to talk about some of the best third party render engines with the best graphics card and CPU to make your machine handle workflow and rendering like a crazy boo without wasting any A 3D render is a computer generated image of an object or scene created by projecting polygons that define its shape onto the picture plane. The number one thing to consider is the 3D model which is the transformation of a two dimensional image into another by adding depth and dimensionality with polygons or other shapes made up from points. Another thing to look out for is 3D texturing. When it comes to texturing, colors and textures are added on top of the 3D model to generate a desired effect. When dealing with a client, one might consider a 3D farm as an easier way to create image. You can search and learn more about 3D farm at your own convenient time. We also have shading. Shading defines how light communicates with the material when light hits it. Finally, we can look at 3D rendering as the process of all these individual parts coming together to create an animated scene with a file format you can preview through your computer's media player and also share to others. Now, the reason why 3D rendering takes so long is because of the memory intensive process involved. Two things have to be looked at during this process, your computer's spec and optimization of elements in your 3D scene. Aside these two, there are other factors which I will talk about if I have more time. Rendering on a CPU or GPU has to be accounted for. Most beginners might have limited knowledge on this. I have a video on the best GPU and CPU for 3D animation, which I have left a link to in the description below. The difference in CPU rendering and GPU rendering is a huge contributor to why your 3D might be taking so long. A GPU is significantly stronger in power than a CPU, but a higher CPU helps account for a good render time. In general, the higher your computer specs, the better your textures and rendering time will be. A photorealistic rendering is considered as a 3D design with high quality elements such as illumination, ambient occlusion and depth of field. These are what contributes to the realism of your 3D final scene. And for that matter, if you have all these in your scene, then you should know your render time is going to cook up. 3D rendering has two types of shadows involved. One is ray tracing and two is depth map. Depth map is considered as a quick way of rendering, but you would have to be looking out for um, resolution and artifacts. Ray traced shadows are rendered one pixel at a time during the 3D rendering process. This can take longer, so be careful when using ray traced shadows or depth map shadows. Regardless of what you add, 3D designs are highly resource intensive service because it depends on two or three components of your computer to be running simultaneously. If you want to speed up your render time, then investing your all onto hardware and render engine configurations wouldn't be enough. To help you decrease your rendering time, let's talk about a few tips and upgrades to help you quicken your rendering process. One is to lessen the number of samples. To speed up your render, you can cut down the number of samples used in your final product. There are many approaches to this which will depend on the type of program and settings you have installed. Sample is simply the noise that appears on your 3D scene is rendered. As soon as you open your render panel in your software, you can see the number of samples options. Although decreasing the number of samples may reduce the render time, the results 
may have less clarity. Meanwhile, an increase in the number of samples does not mean that you get a better looking render. So just look out for that by running more tests to ensure you have the right balance of go-to samples and stick to it. I've got optimization tricks for days. You can delete part of a model that does not face the camera. Also, objects far away from the camera could be paid less attention to in terms of texture quality, effect quality, and number of polygons used. Same applies to objects out of focus. Less attention and effort should be given to those elements when about to render. Although render algorithms are improving, you might be tempted to go in for certain high quality effects. But the issue is, can your computer handle them? If not, then make sure you stick to the sampling and optimization process to kill some render time. Trust me, if you are able to apply these tactics very well, you can have the well polished desired look you are looking for in a short time without making your computer unleash a single curve. Two is computer specification. I'm not going to spend much time on this one because I have a dedicated video for the best RAM, CPU and GPU for animation. But let me say something about the hard drive you're going for because that's something I have never tackled on this channel before. Rely on a solid state drive. There are two main types of hard drives, the previously standard hard drives and the solid state drive. SSDs are superior in most ways, allowing faster access times offering great reliability and even using less power. The only downside is that they tend to be more expensive. If you want your machine to 3D render as quickly as possible, then an SSD is definitely worth the upgrade. Finally, you can limit bounces and optimize styles. I don't really pay attention to these two anymore because, well, they can give you at least 15 seconds to 30 seconds speed but that's going to be the least of your problem unless you are rendering a 20 to 1 hour animation then bounce and tiles can be considered also check the type of software you are using most softwares don't have support for any hardwares they are just floating softwares and have high chances of either being super fast or super slow regardless of how fast you beef up your computer that's one main reason why people tend to tilt towards Autodesk softwares, especially when they are on NVIDIA graphics. Autodesk and NVIDIA work together to make sure they offer quick driver updates the moment there is an update to any Autodesk software, just so they can avoid crashes and software lag issues. AMD on the other hand tend to tilt towards gaming, but I hear they are also trying to collaborate with certain 3D software companies so they can offer optimization on software updates through your driver update solution. As it stands now, AMD GPUs are not the right solution to the 3D nation. Let me give you a quick tip. You can go in for an AMD CPU and not an Intel CPU when it comes to animation and pair it with an NVIDIA graphics card. So an AMD CPU and an NVIDIA GPU. Best combo. Now. When it comes to third-party render engines, I would recommend V-Ray because it's the best at this moment. Octane will be an option only if the software you are using doesn't support V-Ray but only Octane. There are so many render engines but let's not forget we are talking about speed here. Any other render engine I've tested is not as quick as V-Ray or Octane. So yeah, if you love this video then a sub to the channel will be 